All right, everybody. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, my name is Brian Arnett, and I'm an admissions advisor here at University of Western States. Um, thank you so much for attending our Doctor of Naturopathic um, webinar. We're so excited to talk to you today. Today's webinar will be an overview of UWS's NMD program. We'll go over lots of information in the following slides, but we always encourage anyone who may be interested in learning more to reach out to our office for additional information. Um, please feel free to ask questions today throughout the webinar. Um, there should be a Q&A chat option on the bottom of your individual Zoom screens. We're going to try our best to answer all of your questions today, but if we don't get to your question, feel free to include your name in the comments and we will respond to you individually via email or the phone next week. Um, we're also going to be answering general questions at the very end of our presentation today, um, and that will include a frequent, frequently asked questions slide. So I encourage you to submit questions in the Q&A chat toward the end of our presentation today, since we will be covering a lot of really great information. Um, here's a schedule for today's open house. We anticipate this webinar to be about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, it will also be recorded and uploaded to the UWS website if you'd like to watch it later or for prospective students who weren't able to attend live today. So before we jump into everything, I have a couple of polls because I would love to get to know who is here, um, kind of starting with where you're from. So let me pull this poll up, pull the poll up. <laughs> You should be able to see this on your screen. Will you go ahead and answer the question there? We just want to get a feel for where everybody's from on our webinar today. Okay, I'm going to give you guys just a couple more seconds to answer. And here we go. So it looks like the majority of our people joining us today are in the West Coast. Um, I am as well. I'm located just north of Portland, Oregon, which is where our campus is located. We have some people scattered throughout the country and in Canada. Welcome. We are so excited to have you here today. Um, the second question I have for you is, um, how did you hear about UWS? Perfect, just a couple more questions, or sorry, a couple more seconds. And I'll go ahead and close that. Okay, so it looks like the majority of you learned about UWS from an internet search, some of you from social media or another, um, another avenue. So thank you so much for kind of sharing a little bit about yourselves and who's here with us. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so just a little bit about University of Western States. The University of Western States has a long history at the forefront of health and wellness in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, with our founding in 1904 in Portland, Oregon, UWS is the second oldest chiropractic college in the world. As we grew, we integrated other areas of health into our programming and curriculum, including a naturopathic medical program back in 1923. As UWS continued to grow, we added several online master's degrees, such as sports medicine, nutrition and functional medicine, clinical mental health counseling, and sports psychology. Our Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine program is relaunching this year, and we're welcoming our inaugural class this October of 2023, 100 years after our original naturopathic program began. Um, we're offering an exciting new curriculum complete with IFM coursework. The ND program is located in our beautiful Portland campus and has a patient-oriented functional medicine focus woven in through the curriculum. So why choose naturopathic medicine at UWS? Um, the functional medicine concepts are woven throughout all of the naturopathic medical program, which is really unique, and it prepares our students to apply these concepts in clinical practice. The degree to which these concepts are integrated into the program differentiates us from other naturopathic medical programs. We're going to be diving pretty deep into that today. Our um, partnership with the IFM, we even have um, a representative special guest speaker today from the IFM that you'll hear from in a little bit, um, but that's the biggest thing that really sets us apart. Um, I have a couple more poll questions for you before where we dive in and you can listen to a new speaker. Um, I would love to hear um, when you plan to start the ND program. Are you looking at this fall of 23? Maybe next year, year after that? I didn't go, I didn't go beyond that. <laughs> so <laughs> perfect. Couple more seconds there. Perfect, All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end that and share that with you. 
Looks like several of you are looking to start this upcoming fall and many are also looking at next fall of 2024. So that's really good to know. And then my last poll question before we move forward is what makes you most excited about the ND program at UWS? I love watching these come in, you guys. <laughs> Perfect. All right, a couple more seconds on this poll, and then I'll go ahead and close it out, and we'll continue. Okay, great. So, very interesting. Some of you are very interested in the hands-on clinical experience aspect of our program, the partnership with IFN and the certification. Some of you are excited about the location in Portland, but all some of you are excited about all of the above, including our robust faculty. So um, thank you for sharing with me. Um, I think that kind of helped us get an idea of who is on our um, webinar today and what you're excited about. So thank you so much. Um, Without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our first speaker. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Dr. Marsha Pringuber. She is the Dean of our College of Naturopathic Medicine. Dr. P has an extensive background in naturopathic medical education, as well as academic administration. She has served on several national naturopathic and integrative medicine um, organizations. And it's an honor to have such a distinguished physician leading our new ND program. So without further ado, I'll have her unmute herself and introduce you to Dr. Marsha Pringuber. There we go. All right. Sorry. I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, the one I imagine I'll have questions on is the Council on Naturopathic Medical Education. I don't think we need to say more about me than that. We can move to the next slide. All right. So I'm assuming most of you know something about naturopathic medicine. Um, it's uh, definitely a passion of mine um, because it talks about or it looks at the whole person, the mind, body, spirit. We look at environmental factors. We look at genetic factors. We'll go into all more of that later. But looking at all of those things, we're trying to support the body as it tries to heal itself. Um, body can tell us a lot of things. We often talk about fever and what fever has to do with health and whether we should just try and go in and suppress the fever or if we want to take advantage of the fevers giving us a message, so which it is trying to do. So it's about looking at all of those pieces and making use of the body's own uh, native ability to heal itself. Okay, next slide. So I get a lot of questions about um, what's a net people that call themselves naturopaths versus uh, those who call themselves naturopathic doctors or are licensed. And I'll just start with a comparison across the board. An unlicensed naturopath is typically somebody who has um, maybe studied on an online program that is fully online and has limited uh, education components to it. In, uh, if you have, in some states, you can still be an unlicensed naturopath and other states that is an illegal option. So an unlicensed naturopath has a very limited scope of practice. They typically will call themselves health consultants or wellness coaches as opposed to a licensed naturopathic physician um, where the scope of practice is much broader. You're trained as a primary care physician. So whatever a primary care physician can do, you can do in those states that license you to do that. You can order labs and imaging as well as the diagnosis and treatment of um, a broad range of uh, health issues. Licensure, there, you can't be licensed as an obviously an unlicensed or yet to be naturopath and licensure. While not every state is licensed, we do recommend that any uh, student who's graduated from a naturopathic program obtain a license and hold on to that license uh, maintain that license, even if they're working in an unlicensed state, it gives them some credibility to the people that they're working with. Fee collection is a straight cash practice for an unlicensed ND. Uh, many, many states have uh, private insurance coverage in the uh, state. Uh, Medicaid is still an option uh, and obviously cash. Patient referrals, we don't know anything about patient referrals, it's not well tracked. 
but in a licensed state, you will uh, send and receive referrals uh, with all kinds of other healthcare practitioners, whether there are other MDs or chiropractors or MDs or DOs or any of a number of allied health professionals, um, occupational physical therapists and so forth and so on. So it's a great uh, broad scope that you have as a licensed physician. Okay. Uh, so just this is going to be quick brief overview. It is an on campus program. There may be a few hybrid classes throughout the program, but as a general rule, you'll be on campus most of the day, Monday through Friday. Uh, the academic coursework is also in person, not just the clinical components of it. Clinical rotations are always in person. You may have a telemedicine visit here and there, but the accreditor for naturopathic programs does uh, have restrictions on how much can be telemedicine, how much of your experience can be telemedicine. So there's a clinic right on campus where you'll do many of your rotations, but we'll also have uh, community clinics in the neighboring areas to do clinical rotations with uh, faculty in those uh, areas. Okay. So, yeah, this is such an exciting component for me. The faculty come from a broad range of backgrounds. There are basic science faculty that you'll spend a good bit of time with in your first and uh, second years, like in anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Um, in the counseling and social work, we will have counselors and social workers uh, to train you. Diet and nutrition will have naturopathic physicians, um, many of whom have uh, training in functional medicine. Botanical medicine, people with expertise, and that's their passion, is in botanical medicine. So you can see we are gathering a faculty that have a variety of experiences and specialize in those things that you will be learning from them. The second part is probably the most uh, critical to me. I'm wanting to graduate students who not only know naturopathic medicine from a uh, the point where they study about it, but take it on to the next level where they've gone beyond critical thinking and medical reasoning and have explored it to a deeper level so that we're looking at what is new, what can you help push the profession forward with, looking at research that's going to help us do that. Often that research is closely tied with other um, health practitioners. Here, we have the advantage of working with chiropractors as well and looking at ways to help uh, people's health, integrating those pieces of information. So I'm very excited. I want to see students who have, um, who think outside the box. Yeah. All right. Uh, the structure. It's roughly 300 credits. I think at the moment it's 298.5 credits, it fluctuates a little bit. It's 14 quarters, it's, so it's a year-round program. You're done in three and a half years. Uh, right now, we're admitting students in the fall, whether we'll have a second admit uh, in future years remains to be seen. Um, the quarters are 11 weeks, so you uh, have the advantage of having then a two-week break between each quarter, so it's not so long and torturous. And all you can think about is the end. <laughs> the end will be there before you know it for each 11 week quarter. Uh, yeah, you can pretty much depend on that much time, 35 or 40 hours, uh, commitment to being on campus. Fortunately, it's a wonderful campus, so uh, it'll be a, a delight to be here. Okay. All right, so don't let this <clears throat> blind you with this all these uh, names and numbers. This is just to give you an idea. There are two slides to this, but let's just talk about what we have quarters one through much of nine. <clears throat> and you'll see in the first blue and green, well, mostly that left column. There's a lot of basic science in there. Human morphology is really about anatomy, histology, um, cellular and molecular architecture has a lot uh, of connection to that. So you'll see in the biomedical integration, we're going to combine all of those courses above it, function and dysfunction, which is physiology and pathology, 
with the cellular and molecular architecture and human morphology and create case -based, a case-based course in which you're tying that information together. It makes it seem much more real and it's a reminder of why you're here, not just to memorize facts about bones and ligaments and tiny cells. So <clears throat> we make, it makes sense with cases, real cases. Landmark palpation is just learning how, what is connected to what. It's a lot of fun. It's a lab class that uh, you work with each other. So clinical skills just get you started in the clinic area. Some of it is simply learning the rules of uh, the road, if you will, um, learning about uh, keeping confidentiality, learning about how to use the um, uh, electronic medical record, but for me, the most exciting class is the history and philosophy of naturopathic medicine. It goes far back. It deals with uh, all kinds of uh, healthcare providers, it really starts with a lot of MDs who have taught us things and the evolution of uh, the philosophy. So that's a course after my own heart. At any rate, you can see that <clears throat> some of these courses have a long sequence. The human morphology uh, goes over three quarters, the function and dysfunction, last six quarters, broken apart by uh, systems, cardiovascular system, the endocrine system, and so forth and so on. Immunology is tied to uh, just straight immunology and what that means for us today um, and how we look at the diseases and pandemics um, that we deal with. So it's very alive, uh, current course. Some of these courses, and we'll, uh, I'm going to don't jump ahead, Bregan, but I'm going to jump ahead a little bit with the um, <clears throat> interest for those people who would come in as advanced standing. So perhaps uh, chiropractors who have just finished or are in their last quarters um, or people from other professions, MDs, DOs, who want to come and do a naturopathic education. Obviously, some of these you've already uh, covered. You know those uh, issues very well. Human morphology, cellular molecular architecture, landmark palpation, depending on what your uh, area is. So those would be transferable courses, and you'll see those throughout. If we <clears throat> look at somebody who wants to start sooner than later, because we're just starting with the one uh, first year cohort, we don't offer all of the courses this year. We'll build on them every year at a time. But there's always a course or two that can be taken um, by an advanced standing student now, just not on a full-time basis. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one, just the next slide. So you can see here, there are lots of uh, clinical rotations in the uh, last four quarters. Um, that's what most of your time is spent on. It's not clearly or exclusively that, but quite a bit. The grand rounds uh, will address areas of interest, just enough of a taste to see if you want to pursue that more on your own um, in healthcare, because there's an endless number of topics in healthcare. Your senior project is actually the uh, case report for the IFM component of your uh, hopeful certification down the road. You'll have completed all of that. I'll let um, Dr. Waddles talk a little bit more about that, but that is built right into our program. It's just so well integrated. Okay, next one. Um, so this is what I was alluding to before. If you come in as an advanced standing student, when we have the program fully all 14 quarters in place, it should take approximately two years to complete the ND degree. These are the uh, types of uh, healthcare providers that we see um, who are interested in adding naturopathic medicine to their uh, degrees and practice. The doctor of pharmacy um, would be very different than the doctor of osteopathic medicine in terms of what transfers in, doctor of chiropractic as well. Um, but we evaluate those uh, transcripts on an individual basis and try and find the uh, ideal situation for you. So MS programs in healthcare, may, some of those credits may qualify for transfer. We'd have to look at those uh, carefully. 
Um, yeah, a full-time advanced standing schedule has not been set. Right now we have lots of chiropractic uh, students who are interested, but the schedules are so packed, it's going to be done on an individual basis to see what fits in and what does not. Okay. Um, so we do, you do have cadaver lab as part of the human morphology course. And this is um, just, this is where we are right here. Oh, you can't see my, uh, <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Brigan. That's where we are. And it's just a 10 or 15 minute drive to uh, the campus, Linfield Cap campus where the cadaver lab is. We provide, take that into account in the schedule, uh, commute times to and from. Okay, so here's the cadaver lab. State-of-the-art cadaver lab. You can see the screen so that you're, uh, you can see what you're supposed to be doing up on the screen as well as, thank you, as well as um, working directly with the cadavers. These are prosected cadavers, so you won't have to take time searching for things. It will be much clearer, but you will have your hands uh, locating all those uh, wonderful pieces. It's a great, talk about hands-on, but it is a great learning opportunity. Regan, anything else that needs to be added into that? No, I think that's about it. Thank you so much, Dr. Pringu, for giving us a overview of the curriculum, a little bit about advanced standing. Um, and then of course, everyone wants to know if we're working with cadavers and the answer is yes. So you have the option to work with cadaver bodies just down the street. And we have cadavers, which are synthetic bodies on our campus as well. So there's a lot of really great opportunities to work with, you know, real human tissue before working with live <laughs> human tissue. Um, it looks like we have one question in the Q&A chat. Um, this person wants to to know, Dr. Pingover, if there will be a white coat ceremony prior to beginning the program? Not prior to beginning the program, but there will be a white coat ceremony, yes. Okay, great. No, thank you. That's really good to know. Um, if there's no other last minute questions, we will continue on and introduce Dr. Waddles, but there will be um, an option for us to answer all your questions at the end. So thank you so much, Dr. Pringover. We will bring her back at the end when we are talking about more questions. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce you each to Dr. Kalia Waddles. Um, Dr. Waddles is an IFM certified practitioner, and she specializes in fertility and functional medicine. She's been a clinical staff member of the IFM since 2017 and develops curriculum for male and female hormones, thyroid, and adrenal function and gut health. Um, she combines naturopathic and functional medicine training um, to treat patients with functional fertility perspective using root cause science-based body system approach to cultivating a fertile body. So without further ado, um, I'm going to turn the time over to Dr. Waddles, um, and I'm so excited to learn from her. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Bregan, for that nice introduction. I just have to say how excited I am to be here talking with you all. If you're on this webinar, I imagine you are um, at a decision point in life and deciding if you'd like to pursue this naturopathic education. And um, it's just such an exciting time. I am so incredibly proud to be a naturopathic doctor. And I think this integration that UWS is doing with naturopathic curriculum and functional medicine education is really I believe to be the future of medicine. It's so exciting. I've been um, joking with our UWS team that I want a second chance at this degree because this is really everything I, dr I, I dreamt of when I was in school. So this is a, a really beautiful and thoughtfully curated program. And I'm just so excited for you all to explore um, what this has to offer. So as Brigan said, I am an, uh, a naturopathic doctor and an IFM certified practitioner. If you're not familiar with the Institute for Functional Medicine, um, we're really the leader in the, in the world of functional medicine education. And so what it means to be certified is that I have attended all of the Institute for Functional Medicine modules. There are seven of them. And then I have completed my case report, which Dr. Prenguber mentioned is kind of baked into the naturopathic curriculum. It's essentially a case report that allows you to demonstrate your confidence and competency using the functional medicine model, which I'll clarify here shortly. Um, and then I've also passed the 200 question board style examination. So there's two assessment components, a written case report, and then um, a multiple choice 
board style examination that allows you to become an IFM certified practitioner. So um, I went through that path a few years ago, and I've been very happy to serve as the associate director of curriculum at the IFM. Uh, it's really just uh, the the alignment of philosophies in naturopathic and functional medicine, I think, makes this a really unique and special program and so excited to talk about it. So let's dive in a little bit and learn about what functional medicine is. It's a comprehensive framework for evaluation and management of patient care. It, it helps us to understand the interactions among the environment, lifestyle, genetic factors that can produce chronic disease or promote long-term health. Doesn't that sound very familiar to what Dr. Prengruber said is kind of the philosophy of naturopathic medicine? So the UWS and IFM partnership will integrate the functional medicine principles in all of the coursework in the UWS ND program and will allow for IFM certification after graduation. And I just have to pause here and highlight what an amazing benefit that is. I'll talk a little bit about my journey to naturopathic medicine here in a moment, but Please just picture me as a naturopathic student on my campus for 35 to 40 hours per week and then doing my IFM coursework on the weekends in whatever spare time I could muster. So the fact that this is really integrated into the curriculum is just an absolute game changer and I can't imagine a better uh, strategy. So um, I thought it would be fun to share a little bit about my path to becoming an ND. And through this story, I'll try to highlight some areas that I think will be helpful for all of you to know as well. Uh, so I started getting my bachelor's degree in human nutrition. And I love that. It helped me to really orient myself to a food first approach, holistic medicine. And it really, I think, helped me be successful in my ND program. So if you have a background in the health sciences, I think that's fantastic. But what I want to point out is that so many of my classmates came to naturopathic medicine as their second career. I had classmates who, uh, I had someone who was an architect before, someone who worked in hospitality services, someone who was a chef. So does it take, you know, completing some prerequisites? Absolutely. But I think it's perfectly appropriate that we might discover naturopathic medicine after we've already been on a career path and we switch gears. So if anybody is kind of contemplating that, it certainly can be done. The other piece here is you'll see, I put some, some botanicals on here and some um, doing some physical medicine. And what I loved about my naturopathic program is that it allowed me to explore the delivery of what we might consider standard of care, because of course, naturopathic doctors can serve as primary care docs, but also allowed me to explore botanical medicine, nutraceuticals, physical medicine, homeopathy, hydrotherapy, all of these additional modalities that I feel really make me a strong clinician because I have so many tools in my toolbox, can really meet the needs of my patient with all of these various modalities. And just like Dr. Prenguber, I love learning naturopathic philosophy um, and learning the history and the roots of why we are able to utilize all these modalities and the influencers that have really made naturopathic, modern naturopathic medicine what it is. So the other piece I'll highlight here is, you can see I put a little selfie here in some scrubs. Uh, and I always encourage students to really take advantage of the time that you are a student. This is the time for exploration and figuring out what you love to do, kind of um, zoning in on what niche you might like to explore. Many, many naturopathic doctors go into primary care, but then there are others like me who choose to specialize. So I chose to specialize in fertility. I have other colleagues who specialize in dermatology or gastrointestinal conditions or really a variety of areas. So I think that that's something nice to think about. Uh, when I was a student, I chose to seek out preceptorships. So that's uh, where you essentially shadow and work with doctors in your community to figure out, you know, do you like working in a, a large multi-practitioner clinic? Do you like working in a single provider setting, a multidisciplinary setting? Um, so I really explored multiple clinic types and then once I discovered that I loved fertility, I kind of took it upon myself to engage with 
the reproductive endocrinologist in my area. So I uh, basically cold called them and said, listen, I know I'm not a traditional OB-GYN student, but I really believe that I have something to offer and I'd love to learn. Can I come rotate through the clinic? And they were amenable to this. And I was able to rotate through three of my city's um, fertility clinics where they're doing, you know, intake for infertility. They're doing intrauterine insemination, uh, in vitro fertilization. And I was able to shadow those docs through their intake in procedures, in egg retrievals. And this was so amazing for me, even, you know, even though I wasn't doing those procedures, because I was able to see how lifestyle medicine, functional medicine, naturopathic medicine could really impact the outcomes in the fertility clinic. So even if I wasn't able to prevent patients from needing these advanced therapies, I felt really confident that I could improve outcomes. And that was a really transformational stage for me in my uh, naturopathic development. Of course, I had to put a picture here in my hazmat suit getting ready for cadaver lab. We all love that. It's uh, really an invaluable, incredible experience. Uh, and so again, I just want to highlight that there are so many things that you can do with a naturopathic degree. And I, I'll use my experience as an example that I now work in medical education at the Institute for Functional Medicine. I have worked in um, a multidisciplinary clinic in person, seeing patients alongside MDs, DOs, physician assistants acupuncture, chiro, physical therapy. And I think that's a beautiful setting. I've done my own private practice virtual setting. I'm all about um, diversifying revenue streams and skill sets. And I think naturopathic doctors are beautifully set up to do that. Uh, so I, I just had such an amazing time and it's fun to look back and have some nostalgia over this really transformational time of life. So thanks for letting me walk down memory lane. All right, so I always get this question of how can functional medicine certification benefit naturopathic doctors? And I think that there's a variety of reasons, but I'll highlight a few that I think are really important. Um, my functional medicine training gave me a framework for applying my naturopathic therapeutics in a systematic way to treat complex chronic disease. And I'm going to explain this further with some visuals in a moment. But I really believe that naturopathic doctors are uniquely well-suited to meet the chronic disease crisis in this country and the whole world because of the way that we really approach patients with a comprehensive, patient-centered, science-based approach. Um, and and I, the functional medicine operating system really helps to direct that effort. And I'll, I'll show you an example in a moment. Through utilizing the tools and the training that functional medicine provides, I experienced increased confidence to work through challenging cases. We all see those patients where there's so much going on, we just don't know what to do next. And as a new doc, that was intimidating to me at times, but I'll show you how the functional medicine framework allowed me to implement my naturopathic strategies even in cases where I, I wasn't initially sure where to start. The naturopathic training, I'm sorry, the functional medicine training also creates a shared language between collaborative care team members. So as I mentioned, I have some experience working in a multidisciplinary clinic setting. And IFM training um, is available to all types of practitioners. We again have MDs, uh, DOs, NDs, nutrition professionals, dentists, pharmacists, acupuncturists, um, nursing professionals. There's a, a really a wide variety of practitioner types who seek out functional medicine certification. And now I have this shared language where when I talk about the functional medicine matrix, which I'll show you in a moment, they know exactly what that means. If I say, I have assessed this patient's antecedents, triggers, and mediators, which I'm going to walk you through, they know what that means. And it really allows us um, practitioners who have a very different background and different training and different modalities to come together and collaborate on patient care. So when you're doing grand rounds, it's seamless and wonderful, and that's a real benefit. There's also an emphasis on practice implementation and efficiency. We know how hard it is to be working and seeing lots of patients every day and having charting and 
also holding this philosophy. So one of the naturopathic principles is docere, which is doctor as teacher. And we really hold that dear. Uh, functional medicine, uh, the Institute for Functional Medicine has an extensive resource bank of handouts and food plans and chart parts that can help make the practice more efficient. And it also allows us to provide patient education. So the patient feels cared for. Uh, we're doing some risk reduction. We're helping our patient to really participate and engage in their own health. And it's really strengthening that therapeutic partnership that's so important for healing. Um, so that's a real uh, uh, important pillar of our philosophy. And then increased practice visibility as part of the functional medicine network. Like I said, there's all types of practitioners that participate in functional medicine certification. And we're often cross-referring to each other. If I have a patient and I know they need a functional dentist or they need to go to physical therapy or they need a chiropractor, I'm really tapping into my functional medicine network to make those referrals. The other component of this is the um, Institute for Functional Medicine maintains a find a practitioner database, which we're, we're going to talk about a little bit more later. But this is where um, patients can go onto the website, they can enter in their zip code, and they can find a functional medicine doctor near them. We find that this is a huge driver of patient volume, especially into new practices. Once our practitioners get certified, they're listed on the website, they call us and say, wow, I've had this giant influx of patients into my office. And we know that naturopathic doctors, while there are many opportunities to join an existing clinic or work in an integrative care setting, many choose to be entrepreneurs and you know, go into private practice and they're small business owners. So having that practice visibility is really important. Um, and I think a real benefit of being certified. So many benefits. Awesome. Thanks, Bregan. I, I really wanted to show you the functional medicine matrix. This is one of our Institute for Functional Medicine's most treasured and valued foundational tools. It's really um, integral to all of the other curriculum that we have developed. And you'll see this theme of the functional medicine matrix throughout the functional medicine curriculum. And I think it's a really beautiful structure. So I'll just take a quick moment and walk you through this so you can kind of understand how this can interplay with naturopathic curriculum and why I say that this is essentially a conceptual framework on which I hang my naturopathic therapeutics. So um, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see the retelling of the patient's story. And this really speaks to that therapeutic partnership piece. We look at antecedents, which are predisposing factors. It's things like your family history and your diet as a child and the route of your birth and whether you were breastfed. We also look at triggering events. So um, sometimes in naturopathic medicine, we call this the never been well since moment. You know, someone had a sickness, they had an injury, they had some kind of trauma, and then they just really felt a shift in their health, but maybe they didn't connect it back to that event. So we're kind of looking for those um, activating events. And then we look at mediators. These are the perpetuators of chronic disease or symptoms. So maybe this is, you know, insulin resistance that's perpetuating a patient's inflammation. And the reason why I'm telling you about all of these factors is because we're really highlighting the retelling of the patient's story, which is helpful for us in complex cases, but is also so healing and validating for a patient to hear that you have retold their story, that you've captured all the details, that you didn't miss any important events. And it really sets the scene for how all of the, the patient's timeline factors have set them on the health trajectory that they're on now. Also at the bottom of the matrix, these are the modifiable personal lifestyle factors. Uh, I think this is such an important part and I definitely felt this emphasis in my own naturopathic training. We specialize in helping patients to optimize their lifestyle factors. So whenever I'm treating challenging cases, I know I always can return to these modifiable lifestyle factors and there's going to be something we can do. Um, that's really so important to every other aspect of patient care. Here in the, the center of our matrix, you can see the mental, emotional, spiritual factors. I think sometimes when we're busy and we're working at patients for chronic disease, it can be 
easy to forget how important that determinant of health is. So we really make that the forefront. And then I wanted to highlight these areas of clinical imbalance. You'll see these seven areas, assimilation, defense and repair, energy, biotransformation and elimination, transport, communication, and structural integrity. These are what we refer to as the nodes of clinical imbalance. You'll see how these are very well aligned with the body systems that you're learning about as part of the naturopathic curriculum. So let me just take defense and repair as an example. This really deals with um, our immune system, inflammation, infection. So that node of clinical imbalance is very much tied to what you might learn in an immunology course. So now you can see your it's traditional immunology curriculum, but we're kind of taking it to the next level to say, here's how this interacts with all of these other body systems. So you heard me say how the matrix can really help me to solve complex cases. And as a new doc, helps to make me feel more confident when I'm not exactly sure where to go next. So how we use the matrix in clinical practice is to actually populate this. So I, um, I use a digital copy, but some use pen and paper. We print out a blank copy and I might see in the assimilation node that my patient has um, a lot of gas and bloating and constipation and a lot of antibiotic use as a child. I'm going to put that all under the assimilation node. And Maybe under defense and repair, they have a history of autoimmune disease. They have an inflammatory condition like eczema. I'm populating all of these signs, symptoms, history, diagnoses, labs, and it allows me to see which of their body systems have the most dysfunction. And then I know if, if their assimilation node, which is gut health, if that is jam-packed full of signs and symptoms in history, I know that I want to start supporting their gut health first. It allows me to create a hierarchy to really streamline my treatment plan and help me get to the root cause of this patient's dysfunction. So I'm so grateful that the matrix is really woven throughout all of the functional medicine curriculum. And I think um, graduates of this program will be exquisitely familiar with the matrix model by the time their program is over, which is so dreamy. All right, we'll go here to the last slide. And um, this is our functional medicine tree. And I just thought this would be helpful as we're trying to visualize how naturopathic and functional medicine are interwoven and aligned. You see this functional medicine tree at the top. We look at organ system diagnoses. This is where we have our standard training, pulmonology, nephrology, um, oncology, endocrinology. These are all the pieces that you're going to learn in your naturopathic curriculum. And then we can link that to all of these matrix components that I just talked about, the antecedents, triggers, and mediators, that whole matrix, all the nodes of clinical imbalance. This really fits perfectly into the curriculum that is existing. So. Um, all of this to say, I think that upon graduation, having this naturopathic foundation and then these tools that allow you to be very effective and efficient and be able to communicate with other practitioners really sets all of us up for success, you know, um, participating in a medical system that contains all types of practitioners and really, again, meeting the needs of a patient population that has increasing chronic disease in this country and beyond. So, so excited for this curriculum to be rolled out and for you all to participate. And thank you so much for letting me gush about my love for both naturopathic and functional medicine. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Waddles. Um, excellent. Oh my goodness. I feel like I've learned so much. <laughs> um, do we have any specific questions for Dr. Waddles at this point before I kind of talk about prerequisite entry requirements um, and we talk about financial aid? Is there any questions for her right now? If not, we'll come back to the Q&A chat. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go move forward, but if you have any questions for Dr. Waddles, we'll definitely um, come back. 
um, and have her answer those. So I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about um, entry requirements to our NMD program. So the first requirement is we love to see a bachelor's degree with at least a 3.0 GPA or at least three years of college level coursework. For students that come in with three years of coursework and don't have a bachelor's degree, you will have the option to complete a bachelor's degree with us after your fifth quarter. So after the, um, after you start the second year of the ND program, and that will be a bachelor's of science in human biology. So um, just keep that in mind. If you don't already have a bachelor's, you will have the opportunity to get one with us. We require 24 semester credits in the life and physical sciences, which must include one whole year of biology with a lab, one whole year of chemistry with a lab, at least one course in psychology and at least one course of physics. These science prerequisites must be passed with a C grade or higher, and, they, and the biology and the chemistry courses must have been taken within the last seven years. Um, if you are somebody who is working in the healthcare profession and your um, sciences are old, send us a resume, send us the transcripts. Dr. Pringuber will take a look at your experience and determine um, if we can waive that seven-year requirement for you or if we might want um, you to do a little bit more um, back more relevant background, I guess, in those sciences. Um, we accept the following classes for each subject. So there's different types of biologies we can accept, right? Histology, molecular biology, uh, genetics, uh, embryology, anatomy, and phys, cellular biology, all these classes count for biology. We accept organic chem, inorganic chem, biochemistry, um, different types of physiology, excuse me, psychology courses, and then physics as well. So just to kind of keep that in mind there. And if you are somebody who has not completed those prerequisites yet, I have some options here on the screen for you. Um, you are welcome to take those prerequisite science courses locally at a local community college or maybe a four-year college um, or online. Um, there are several online institutions that are on demand. So you can literally sign up for their class and start it like the day you sign up, as opposed to having to wait for the start of a semester to roll around. The most popular one we see is Geneva College with Portage Learning. They have on-demand, asynchronous, self-paced science courses that you can start today. So very easy, or not easy, but very obtainable <laughs> to meet that deadline for this upcoming fall. Um, but these are some popular ones, um, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego online, um, University of New England and Cal Campus. Those are some very um, popular online institutions for finishing science prereqs. We also accept CLEP exams. So if you are somebody who has taken those science classes, maybe we did not approve um, your older biology or chemistry classes from the 90s or whatever they may be, you are welcome to take a test out option. The CLEP exam covers one whole year's worth of a college level subject. So if you take the biology CLEP exam and pass it, you're essentially approving to Dr. Pringuber and to all of us that yes, you are up to date on your biology knowledge. Yes, you're up to date on your chemistry knowledge. Um, their tests are about $90 and it's just one test. It's usually a more cost efficient option and time efficient option for students that have older sciences. So it's kind of up to you um, if you have older science courses, if you'd like to take the CLEP exam, if you feel confident, ask for a waiver or just retake the sciences. Now, if you've never taken taken biology at the college level, you've never taken chemistry at the co college level, you must take them. There's no test out option. We have to make sure that you've taken those college level classes to set you up for success, not only in our naturopathic medical program, but also in your career as a physician. We want to make sure that you have a well-rounded um, background in those sciences for your success. Um, University of Western States invites students to learn in several different ways. Students are assessed weekly with readings and lectures, as well as discussion forums, lab work, clinical rotations, clinic observations. UWS's expansive on-campus library will also support you in your discussions and exchange ideas and findings. Um, we do use Canvas as our um, online learning management system. So if you've been at another university with Canvas, you're in great hands. If not, Canvas is a really great system and you'll learn fairly quickly. Um, I do want to run through some of those frequently asked questions. Um, I see there's a couple questions in the Q&A chat as well. But before I answer the chat questions, here's our most frequently asked questions. First, can I apply before completing my prereqs? The answer is yes. We often call, do what we call a conditional admit to students who meet most of the requirements. Maybe you meet the GPA, maybe you have plenty of classes, but maybe your sciences are just a little old, or maybe you're just missing physics. Um, we can 
conditionally admit students, meaning you're admitted on the condition that you finish that last prerequisite class. Um, prerequisites are due six weeks to each term starting. So since this program starts every fall, which is in October, six weeks prior is late August. So all prerequisites are going to be due at the end of August for the upcoming fall term. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, people ask, are my sciences more than seven years old? Can I still apply? Yes, so we just talked about that, but you may need to um, ask for a seven year waiver, retake a science class or take a CLEP exam before starting the program. Um, I get a lot of questions from chiropractors asking, can I have advanced standing in the ND program? Dr. Pringuber talked about this earlier, but the short answer is yes, it'll be approximately two years, um, but we don't have a full-time advanced standing schedule yet. That will be coming in the future as we have more students on the campus, but you are welcome to start this fall as a healthcare provider working in your profession and coming to school part-time. We do have a handful of students going to do that this upcoming fall, so we're very excited. Um, concurrent UWS DC students have advanced standing. Yes. Short answer is yes. About two years, <laughs> approximately two years. Um, and then I'd like to transfer into the program. What does that look like? You will need to submit transcripts to us, um, potentially sell by our course descriptions if the courses are not clear enough in your transcript. And then transfer credit will be awarded on a case by case basis, depending on what classes a student has. Um, I also recommend sending in a resume so we can kind of see what you're doing um, outside of just the academic transcript. What are you doing in the world of healthcare? Um, is there anything that could transfer in? Our very most frequently asked question, and I might have Dr. Pringuber um, hop in and talk about this with me, is, is your ND program accredited by the Council on Naturopathic Medical Education, the CNME? Dr. P, do you want to hop in and talk about this with me? If not, I'm happy to talk sure. about it. No, it's okay. Accreditation, <laughs> uh, programmatic accreditation is a three-step process. You can only do each step as you've met some of the criteria. So we have applied for eligibility and we have been granted that. That's been approved. The next step uh, has to wait until we've had students in for a full year um, before we can submit our self-study and application, which we will do after we've completed that first year. I'm familiar with the process. I was the president of the accrediting body. I know how it works. It doesn't give me any clout, but it does. I know the ins and outs of how, uh, what the expectations are. So we will submit for that. Once we're approved and have uh, the CNME says, yes, you have candidacy status, that allows students then to sit for the uh, part one exam and once they've graduated for the part two licensing exam and then be licensed the candidacy status will achieve that but once we have students a year through the uh, clinical component of the program then we can apply for what is offhandedly called full uh, accreditation officially it's just known as accreditation but that's step three and then we uh, students have the same advantage as they did for uh, candidacy status, but for us, it means a lot more than that. So um, it's just not a waiting period, but an opportunity for us to demonstrate that we have it together, um, that we have a program that's solid and that students are being successful in as we move from step one to step two and then on to step three. Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Pringover. Um, the next two, the last two questions that I will address on this slide is, can I take classes from home? Is this an online program? You know, do I have to move to Portland? The answer is yes. Um, or sorry, yes, you have to move to Portland. No, you can't take classes at home. Um, this program is preparing you to become a physician. I mean, think about the last time you went to a doctor, right? Would you wanna to go to a doctor who only went to online classes who never felt any glands on the body who had never um, palpitated or anything like that? I think the answer we can all say is no, right? This is an on-campus in-person program um, preparing you to become a licensed physician. Um, that being said, there are a few classes that will be offered online to give you some flexibility on some quarters but you will be expected to be in Portland for the entirety of the three and a half year program. And then the last question is, can I work for full time or part time in the program? Are there evening and week weekend courses? Part time work may be possible, especially if you're an advanced standing student doing part time classes because you've already satisfy some of that coursework in your ND schooling, DO schooling, DC schooling. Um, but for a student who's coming straight from their undergraduate career, um, it will be 
pretty challenging <laughs> to work full time and try to be in the program full time. Um, I tell students all the time on the phone, your full time job is to do super well in school <laughs> um, when you're in this program so you can pass your boards and become an outstanding physician and get a fantastic job upon graduation. So um, that's, in my mind, your job <laughs> while you're in school. And then there are, you, most of our classes are offered Monday through Friday. There may be some occasional clinical rotations on the weekends, but they won't be um, frequent. So mostly Monday through Friday type schedule. Bring it, I do want to add yeah. about <clears throat> one of the other prerequisites that we, I don't think talked about is the fact that you need to have some contact with a naturopathic physician as part of your application process. You should shadow one, you should, or if you've been a patient of one, um, interview some. I need to know that you understand what becoming a medical physician really means. And part of that is um, connecting with an MD. So you'll see that in an application process, but I just wanted to bring that up. Yes, thank you. And I have it in a slide after financial aid too. So we will definitely bring that up because it's very important, like Dr. Pringuber said. But before we get to that, let's talk about financial aid. Um, we do our program, our University of Western States is FAFSA eligible. Um, if you're looking at starting this upcoming fall, the 2023-2024 financial year is already live. You can apply for FAFSA for the upcoming year already. Um, FAFSA will not send an award letter to UWS until you've been admitted to UWS. So if you are looking at starting as soon as possible, apply to us, apply to FAFSA, get all those things in. Um, I have our FAFSA code right here on the slide, although I believe when you're on the FAFSA website and you start typing in University of Western States, I think this code populates. If you're an international student, we have an entire um, web page on our UWS website dedicated to Canadian provincial aid as well as other international aid and services and resources. So please go to the website or check out the financial aid um, information, you can call them or email them here. If you want to take a screenshot or a picture, you're welcome to. The total cost of the program is about just over $10,000 per quarter. There's a total of 14 quarters. Um, and I think the most important thing here is to remember that the tuition includes all IFM coursework. All the IFM coursework is with, woven into the total tuition cost for the ND program. This is an incredible savings because students at the IFM invest between $13,000 and $17,000 out of pocket for their IFM certificate on top of the cost of their healthcare degree. The Institute for Functional Medicine is not eligible for FAFSA, meaning IFM students personally fund their own education. However, with the IFM coursework being integrated into our UWS ND program, FAFSA is available and save students an incredible amount of time and money being able to have all expenses and all um, education programming in the same degree. So that's super incredible, which leads me to a return on investment, right? We don't want to go invest in a degree that isn't going to be a great return for us. Um, so I want to kind of touch on this. And Dr. Waddles and Dr. Pringuber helped me create this slide because they're NDs themselves. Um, the first one being most NDs practice in a private clinic instead of public hospitals or emergency rooms, which fosters a less stressful work environment. Incredible quality of life, and then a pretty high career satisfaction rate. Now, there are those who do want to work in a uh, clinical or a hospital setting. Dr. Pringuber worked in an oncology center for, is it decades? A couple of years, maybe a decade, <laughs> um, and found it very uh, fulfilling and rewarding. And you can always email her to chat all about that. Um, but many of, you know, many NDs like that private practice office, that private practice um, atmosphere. Most NDs also run their own practice. You're able to set your own hours, choose your favorite ideal work 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 location, whether that's rural or urban, choose your ideal work population, prenatal, postpartum care, fertility care. I mean, Dr. Waddles talked all about that, pediatrics, athletes, geriatrics. Um, the clinical rotations that you'll have in the ND program off may assist students to connecting with future employment opportunities, which is a big deal. Um, there are several business classes woven into the curriculum to help you learn how to be a successful business, successful business owner. And Dr. Waddles um, talked about this briefly, but graduates of our program who then pass their IFM certification exam are listed on the IFM Find a Practitioner webpage, which has over 1 million views each year. So pretty incredible visib visibility, return on investment, making that worth it <laughs> going to school. You can let me just chime in really oh, quickly. Yes. I checked with the marketing team this morning and this last year, the Find a Practitioner page had 2.4 million views. So oh, people wow, are amazing. really looking for functional medicine docs. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so even more than a million views, 2.4 million, that's incredible. So very briefly, before I get to the last few questions and wrap up our um, presentation today, uh, when should I apply to UWS? Um, 
now. You're welcome to apply now. Our application deadline for this upcoming fall is May 1st, so just a couple of months away. If you have any questions, schedule an advising appointment with your advisor, and we will talk all about the program with you if you have questions. Your application will include a $50 application fee, two letters of, uh, excuse me, two entrance essays. The first is why you're choosing to become a naturopathic physician with a focus on functional medicine. And the second essay, which Dr. Pringuber talked about, lists ex specific experiences you've had working with an ND. We're going to need their names and the dates, the contact information, so that we can make sure you understand very well what it, what it entails to be a naturopathic physician. If you've never shadowed anybody before um, or never seen, been seen by an ND before, Look in your, uh, look at the uh, IFM maybe. Follow Dr. Waddles on Instagram. She has a really incredible um, educational Instagram. Uh, functional fertility, I think, uh, is the name of her handle. You know, start learning about what that entails. And then you'll want to submit your prerequisite timeline well in advance. So like we talked about earlier, prerequisites are due six weeks before classes begin, but you're welcome to submit that application before completing prereqs as long as we know you have a plan to finish them on time. Um, we require transcripts from all institution you've attended. So undergrad, grad school, if you went to some, a couple community colleges, make sure you send those in. We re require a resume, two letters of recommendation. Um, one of them must come from a healthcare practitioner. And then there is a personal interview. Now, the interviews are on Zoom if you're not in the Portland area. If you're local to Portland, we're going to ask that you come to campus and do your interview in person. All the interviews are done with Dr. Pringuber, so she'll get a chance um, to meet with you, sit down with you, make sure that... Um, you're a good fit for UWS and UWS is a good fit for you and your career goals. Um, her interviews last, I guess you could chime in here, Dr. P, I think between uh, 45 yeah. minutes to an hour or yeah. so, getting to know you better, an hour. Okay, perfect. Um, after that interview, whether it's via Zoom or in Portland, um, we try to get back to you within about a week or two after your interview. So we try to get back to you as quickly as possible. We're not going to keep you waiting. <laughs> and then after you're admitted, there is a $300 tuition deposit that holds your spot in the fall cohort. It allows um, you to receive a FAFSA award letter to register for classes. Again, hold your spot. And that $300 tuition deposit is um, subtracted from your first quarter tuition statement. So it's not an extra fee, which is really nice. Um, your next steps are then to connect with an advisor. If you have any questions, email or call the admissions office for um, advising questions and start your application. It's open now. Um, due May 1st, classes begin October 9th. So that's going to be here before we know it. And then that six-week deadline for prerequisites is going to be August 25th 5th for this year. Um, before we close up and answer last-minute questions, I want to talk about preview day. We are so excited. We are offering our first in-person preview day since COVID. Um, so we had our preview days online for the last couple of years and we're bringing it back. Um, so if you're interested, please scan this QR code. It'll take you straight to the registration website. We are having um, a big on-campus preview day for our two in-person programs, which is Doctor of Chiropractic and Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine on Saturday, April 29th. It's gonna be pretty much an all-day thing. We'll have a light breakfast for you. We will have lunch provided. Um, you'll be meeting with faculty and staff and alumni um, to talk about healthcare education, the future of the ND profession and the chiropractic profession um, and how you know UWS lives our student-focused core value. If you're traveling more than 60 miles from Portland, we will accommodate you with one night hotel stay. Um, so again, if you are interested, please scan this slide and sign up for preview day because we are so excited about it. Um, if you are not eligible or able to come for preview day, but you are wanting to visit campus, we do have um, afternoon tours every day. Um, well, every weekday <laughs> at 12.40 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and you can scan this QR code in order to um, sign up for a, a tour. And so before I close out the uh, webinar, I'm going to finish those couple of questions in the Q&A chat, but I did want to thank you all for attending today um, and thank Dr. Waddles and Dr. Pringuber for sharing their insights, um, and we really appreciate you. If you want to stay for a few more minutes while we answer questions, you're welcome to. If, you're, um, if you need to run somewhere or your questions have been answered, great. Um, we appreciate you coming. I'm going to go ahead and open this Q&A chat. Um, Dr. Pringuber, this is a question for you, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure if we know quite this answer, but we have a person who wants to know what happened to our naturopathic medical program back in 1923. Do we happen to have an answer on that? None of us were around in 1923. So. <laughs> not even me. So yeah, um, we don't have all the details, but I think there was a lot of um, political issues within the school and uh, it was joined with the chiropractic program and the chiropractic 
Arctic program had a number of issues. And so ultimately, financially, it just couldn't survive. And that's what happened to it because of all of those factors. Sure. So, yeah. Luckily, they've been resolved. We're bringing the program back and our chiropractic right. program is as strong as ever. And that's been around for over 100 years. It's a very and successful program. Some of the people who were involved in that um, started another program that fall. So it's there was no gap. It was in 56, I think, that okay. um, we closed. So, yeah. And then another quick question. If a student already has a Bachelor of Science degree and would like a second degree, can they qualify and earn the BS in Human Biology? I believe the answer to that is yes. Do you have any additional insight to that? No, they, they can. Okay, perfect. The, yep. the difference is that you, if you don't have an undergraduate degree, you must complete the undergraduate degree okay. uh, while you're here. It's not an option. It's a requirement. Perfect. And then it's optional if you already have a degree. But if you'd like a second, yep, we can give you a second degree, <laughs> second bachelor's and an ND. So, you know, it's fantastic. Um, this person asked, so is general chemistry one and two not accepted, just organic? Um, no, general chemistry one and two is perfect. So if you have gen chem one, gen chem two, um, and that's a whole year sequence of chemistry, that's perfectly fine. That will satisfy the requirement. You'll just want to make sure that at least one of those gen chem one or gen chem two include a lab. But usually the term general chemistry and inorganic chemistry are synonymous terms. So if your class says general chem, that's just fine. We can we can accept that for the prerequisite, as long as you have a C or higher. Um, this person wants to know if the $10,000 per quarter includes cost of living. It does not. So that is just the tuition itself. Cost of living will absolutely vary depending on where you live in the area. If you have a roommate, um, you know, um, if you're living with a family, if you're living on your own. So that's just the tuition cost. When you apply for FAFSA, you can tell FAFSA that you are looking for um, cost of living funds as well. So they will give you probably more than you need. <laughs> um, this person asked, how long do you anticipate us waiting for the decision once all the applications submitted? Um, I'd say anywhere between a week and a month. So if you submit your entire application to us, um, we try to review that with the admissions committee within a week or so of you applying, and then review, send your application on to Dr. Pringuber so she can do an interview with you. Uh, and then after the interview process, we try to get back to you within another week or so. So I would say from the time you hit submit to the time you're admitted, it's between like two and four weeks if you have everything in. If you're missing bits and pieces, so if you miss, excuse me, if you submit your application but you're still missing a couple things, it'll take it'll take a little bit longer because we can't move you forward with Dr. Pringuber's interview until everything's in. But roughly, I'd say two to four weeks. We try to we try to have a pretty quick turnaround time there. Um, and then last question here says you require. Oh, do we accept exemptions for the COVID vaccine? The answer to that is yes. The university has exemptions to the COVID vaccine. And then for Dr. Pringuber and Dr. Waddles, we have someone who would love to hear why you each decided to become an ND. I think that's a lovely question. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Waddles, you want to go first? Sure. So uh, I could make this a super long story and I won't do that. There's many synchronicities that led me to this path. But I think like many, the short story is I started seeing an ND when I was 18 and she changed my life. Um, I had some like uh, really reactive skin going on and she taught me how my gut health was really related to my skin. No one had ever told me that that connection existed before. She just taught me so much about um, how all of my body systems were connected. She completely changed my life and saw something in me that I didn't know existed and said, hey, I think you should study nutrition. Um, and that that put me on the path on this, these health sciences and um, I'm so grateful that I had that health challenge and ended up in her office because it truly is why I am who I am today. So for me, this is a second career and I was in the field of education, seeing, uh, teaching kids that had all kinds of problems. I was in, uh, in the field of special education and I kept thinking to myself, this can't be all there is, just what I am teaching them. There must be ways to help support them and their families. Um, and I'd always been interested in healthcare, but never really pursued it. So then I started to look around at what kinds of healthcare I might be interested in. Was it Chinese medicine? I spent time with practitioners, in chiropractic, Chinese medicine, massage, acupuncture, until I, one day, somebody said, well, it sounds like you're in, 
what you really want is naturopathic medicine. And that was like a lightning bolt for me. As soon as they said that, I said, well, yeah, that is what I want. I quit my job. I went back to school to get my prerequisites <laughs> and then went to naturopathic school. Never regretted it for a minute. My interest was in integrative uh, health care and naturopathic medicine. So I went to work in a hospital setting in oncology and worked alongside all of those <clears throat> medical doctors, working with patients from a naturopathic perspective, along with what else they were doing. And it was, it's been such a rewarding, such a rewarding career. So, yeah. I hope that you all find it just as rewarding. Perfect. Thank you both so much. And thank you everybody for attending um, our webinar today on the Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine program at University of Western States. Um, we hope you're ready to become a leader in a nutrition focused whole person approach to healthcare. We hope to hear from you soon and have a wonderful day. Thank you.